Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Alex. And can you believe that in four months, the 800 CCF tier three category ranking guide has been completely flipped upside down? This is what it this is what it looked like just four months ago, just before the Shang-Chi movie came out. And of course, the Shang-Chi update. Take a take a good look at this list. This is not the list as it appears right now, as as it is right now in the game. But this is the list for just four months ago. Yeah, I know. I was shocked when I realized it. And actually, before I realized it, I was like, oh, no, I have no idea what I'm going to do for a video. And then as soon as I found this video, I was like, oh, my gosh, so much has changed in four months. This game honestly moves at a at a surprisingly rapid pace. And sometimes it sort of flies under my radar and I don't realize it until a couple of months later when we go ahead and do something like this. So here we go. We're going to do another ranking of all of the best 800 CCF tier threes including all of the new tier threes that we got in the meantime, which is just Hela, Hyperion, Kingpin, Thena, and Icarus. And then all of the uniforms that we, and Shang-Chi. And then all of the uniforms we got for existing tier threes from Spider-Man, you know, back to Crescent and Captain America and uh, Sharon and Luna. So yeah, we're going to be replacing some of these icons as well. We are going to be moving some of these icons around because yeah, uh, things are just different. For example, I would love to just move this down here because I honestly think that's where Captain Marvel belongs. And I actually don't even think that uh, Magneto belongs on this on this B tier whatsoever. And uh, you know what? He actually might be a little bit better than we thought when we tested him out with a judgment there on stage 24. So we're going to start with that. Uh, there's actually quite a little bit more that I want to do before we get into all the new characters here. I feel like the B tier is going to be the most crowded overall, but I do think it's time to move Vision down. And I actually think I also overestimated War Machine's value, so we're actually going to move him to the bottom of A tier. Some people are going to disagree with me here, but we have Squad Battle. We have three Squad Battle pros who can also do ABX and World Boss Legend, and then we just have... War Machine. So we're, we'll leave it at that for now. We'll maybe consider moving some of the characters around, but let's get to some of the changes here. So really straightforwardly, we're just going to sub out Sharon Rogers. There's really no change here. She's the best 800 CCF tier three in the game. No surprise there. As far as Loki goes, I still think he's the second best 800 CCF tier three. That hasn't changed. The only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to swap over to using the TVA uniform, but it really doesn't matter. They're both amazing and they're almost both identically good. I would say, you know, if you're a newer player, just FYI, or if you have trouble staying alive in content, that the that the President Loki uniform is probably better. Or if you prefer to autoplay certain content like Dispatch and Dimension Rifts, then maybe President Loki is better. But if you're a real hound, if you're a real dog for ABX, or if you'd like to play manually and see the big numbers and, and the Rage CTP synergy, then TVA is better. But yeah, honestly, you cannot go wrong with either uniform. So now that we have that out of the way, oh, there's so much to get to here. So... On top, of, oh, sorry, we also have Luna's to do here. And for Luna, I would say she definitely moved to the top of A tier with her new uniform. She definitely became the best 800 CCF tier three female speed type. I was careful there. Not, not necessarily competing with, well, close to competing with Falcon, but not quite there. But she still gets eclipsed uh, by some of the, the more high value tar targets here. So I'm gonna, we're going to keep her in the A rank. But yeah, these ones back here. They're not actually going to be relisted. They're just, you know, old uniforms that I'm going to get rid of the icons for later. And then Crescent here is the last one. Now, Crescent was D tier. I hesitate to move her out of the D tier because basically the devs just did two things for Crescent. They made her, well, they made her better for PvP, which is worth something. They made her better for ABX, which is worth something. And then they made her leadership better, which is worth, is actually worth something. So I would say she probably justify it probably justifies moving her here. It just does it just doesn't make sense not to put her at least here because none of these characters are the best in any category for any game mode at all, right? So for Crescent to have a great leadership and to be ABX combat, well, her and Sif basically. Well, yeah. But still, I mean she's 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 more valuable to your roster than Magneto is. Cuz they're just leaderships, but then she has other value, you know reflect I from ignore for PvP and stuff like that very high base stats which uh, Magneto doesn't have at all so yeah we're gonna leave that there I don't want to I don't want to think too much about Crescent because I honestly think the devs just perpetually make her a, a meh character speaking of meh characters we have to rank the Eternals next 
Well, I, I want to go in order here, but we're going to go Eternals, then Shang-Chi. Icarus... <sighs> he feels a lot like Blue Marvel. Just not good enough for PvP, and really just a support type to make other characters better. But I actually think he's worse than Blue Marvel, because Blue Marvel has more value for things like Alliance Tournament, and I think Blue Marvel is even better than Icarus for PvP, like Alliance Conquest. The only real value that Icarus has over Blue Marvel is the synergy with Cersei and, and Gilgamesh with those buffs, and then he has access to a unique artifact effect, which Blue Marvel doesn't have yet. But I would much rather have uh, Daredevil than Icarus in PvP, and frankly, it's a toss-up between him and Hulk at this point. So I'll put him, I'll give him a little bit of points ahead of Hulk, because he's got a little bit more PvE value, but yeah, I see him as a very middling very sort of five out of ten mediocre tier three uh, that isn't really going to move the needle much for your roster unfortunately Fina, on the other hand is insanely good and i honestly think that she deserves to be right here because she basically packs the same punch as almost any of these characters does in pve and she has a very consistent rotation very proc friendly so she works with a plethora of different builds whether it's an obelisk uh, you know, Mighty Destruction, a Rage, and Energy. Uh, she has the heal now. She has the, the artifact that gives her, you know, some ignore dodge and some damage to villains. She's really got the, the full package. I'm not sure if she's as good for PvP as Falcon is with his debuff, uh, dodge, heal, um, passive. But I'll put her there tentatively. I can always, you know, we, we make mistakes sometimes. We can always fix those mistakes later on. So I'm not too worried about overvaluing her a little bit. It's not much anyways, right? If she's not there, she's there. Right, we're not really crying over some crazy uh, mis miscalculation. Uh, and then we have Shang-Chi here, before we get into some of the more recent ones. Very, very good character. Surprisingly still hanging in there for PvP. And when I say that out loud and I realize, you know, all that he brings to the table, ah, it's tough. It's tough not to put him right here. Right? It's tough not to put him here, and I'm tempted to put him here. But... We'll put him here for now. I think I'm undervaluing him a little bit. He has some of the rare combination, like he has a rare combination of good uh, abilities for climbing in World Boss Legend, as well as the leadership ability, which gives him access to the White Fox buffs. So yeah, I actually just realized I'm also missing White Fox as a tier three, which is hilarious because I had White Fox as a 800 CC or at a, as a transcended character in the transcended ranking when she's not transcended. So we'll be back in a second when we get back White Fox and we'll continue. And we're back with the inclusion of White Fox. Now, unlike other characters, she's really just a support. However, unlike other characters, she is by far the best support in the game for pushing specific content. Whether, I mean, it's almost all PvE content, but whether it's ABX, World Boss Ultimate, World Boss Legend, Squad Battle, right? Like Dispatch, right? She, she just helps you push. She's just the ultimate engine pushing your team forward. So I honestly think it would be disrespectful to put her anywhere under Taskmaster because she's just straight up a way better support than he is, although it's a little bit less flexible. But she's just, you know, the difference between Taskmaster for a hero with the leadership ability and her, even though he gives full buffs to Cable, for example, the difference between his buffs to Cable and her buffs to Cable is like night and day. I honestly think she's more worthwhile on your roster just for the value of her support buffs, especially if you have the... A lot like if you have a lot of the leadership characters then icarus or daredevil or blue marvel or thor i mean i i mean i don't know how crazy you want to get here listen it really th this is a tricky one it really depends on how many leadership characters you have but if you think that this is a crazy place to put her go ahead and look at the top n nine characters that i put here in s tier and a tier if you agree with these then count it down with me Leadership, 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 oops. <laughs> leadership, leadership, leadership. Yeah, seven of the nine characters at the top of the meta for 800 CC of tier three all have leadership. Yeah, and Thor has leadership and Icarus has leadership and it, like, it goes on and on and on. There's more and more characters and we're not even done here yet. We still have to re-rank Captain America who is sitting down here and we have to rank big old Spidey. So, who also has leadership. So, yeah, I honestly think this is where she deserves to be, man. And if that makes you uncomfortable, that's fine. Anywho, moving on. Uh, Captain America got a new uniform, which is very good. And I honestly think Cap is just a better version of War Machine. And, a, a, like, an actually less frustrating version of War Machine to play. 
So I'm actually going to put him here next to Rogue. I might even put him ahead of Rogue, but we'll put him here for now. Because he has access to more buffs than Rogue has access to. And we're actually going to move, because this is getting too crowded up here and we still have a couple people to put. We're actually going to move War Machine down. Yes, I know. Come for me in the streets. I'm strapped. Okay. Moving along, Hyperion, really disappointing in my opinion. Uh, he's he's very... No, not that disappointing. But he's very much just like an Icarus. Very much like an Icarus. Except I would, I would argue that he probably has less PvP value than Icarus. So I would probably put his value somewhere around here. Somewhere around Taskmaster. I really wish that Hyperion had gotten more. Sorry, Narusko. But yeah, I, I do think that he's here. I mean... Yeah, it's, it's tough here. It's tough to say, but okay, maybe maybe that makes sense. But still, I don't really think he goes too much further than that, unfortunately. And then we're left with three. Kingpin, Hella, and ooh, big old Spidey. We'll start with Hella first. It's tough. It's tough to rank Hella. She's very good, but she also needs a very specific build to be good. For PvP, she absolutely needs the artifact. For PvE, she basically needs a mighty CTP of destruction. But she's definitely A tier at the very least. I would say she's better than Captain America. I would say she's better than Rogue. I would say she's better than Ghost Rider. Is she better than Luna Snow? I don't know. This is where it gets tough for me. Luna Snow has no PvP value. I think I think putting Hela near Shang-Chi makes sense. Because you're looking at two characters that are very similar. They can both go into the 40s for World Boss Legend and they can solo the content. And they're both above average, not the top tier of PvP, but they're definitely knocking on the door. And if enough PvP threats are banned, like Doom and whatever, then they can easily be, you know, they can easily get a lot of action in PvP for that reason. So I think that's a fair assessment there of those two. I may be overvaluing Captain America Falcon at this point a little bit, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I'm sort of stressing PvP at the moment, and I do think that these two both crush him in PvP, so... Another idea would be to swap them like this and put him down here. I don't think that's I don't think that's wrong either. That doesn't really feel wrong, although there is a pretty big jump between these two and then these three here. But okay, we'll 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 see what shakes out. And then we got Kingpin here. This is a tough one. Very good combat villain, but not too much value outside of the few game modes that you're gonna put him in. So I think tentatively you want your Kingpin somewhere around. Well, I would want my Kingpin somewhere around here. I do think he's better than, than War Machine. I think he's going to hit as hard, maybe a little bit less hard under ideal circumstances if you can get all the best procs for War Machine and all the best accumulation. But under average runs, right, with average luck and average RNG, I think Kingpin is going to come out ahead. So much easier to play. Very proc, extremely proc friendly. I don't know if he's better than Captain America, though. Not, not too sure about that yet. We'll have to wait and see. And then we come to the man of the hour, the boy of the hour, the, the teenager of the hour, Spider-Man. Oh, sorry. We have to move him off here, and we move Cap off here. That's actually really satisfying. Moving characters out of the bottom. This is what you want to see in Marvel Future Fight. And it's really good to see this D tier really start to shrink. Now, I could definitely start justifying moving some of these C tier characters down, but we're not going to have to do that because we know Spider-Man is going up to the S tier. The question is, where on the S tier is he going? <sighs> That's tough. That's very tough. However, I think I'm going to do something crazy. I think this is where he belongs. Hit me up in the comments down below. I'm not ending the video just yet, but I really want to hear from you once you've gotten to this point in the video uh, what you think of that. I do think he is now the best tier 3 character in the game at 800 CCF. He combines insane value and... He may be he may be better than Sharon Rogers for PVE, but even if he was, let's say he's worse. Okay, let, just for the sake of this argument, let's just say he's worse than Sharon for PVE for World Boss Ultimate, World Boss Legend, etc. Let's just say he's ten percent worse, twenty percent worse. Let's just again, let's just say, just for example, he's a hundred million percent better than Sharon Rogers for PVP. He single-handedly claps Doom, Sentry. He claps everyone not named Gilgamesh, Luke Cage and Wolverine, and maybe Shang-Chi, but maybe not. So he, there's an extremely short list of characters that can check him, and they're not even the most prevalent PvP threats out there. So I gotta say, he is... Yeah, I, I, I really think this makes sense. It's, it's crazy to say, and it's crazy to see after all these years, Sharon finally get dethroned, but who better to dethrone Sharon Rogers than another character whose name starts with S? 
It's really meant to be, I'm telling you, all the best free-to-play characters are starting with an S. Especially if you don't buy their uniforms. But well, that's for another video. That's kind of a joke. That's for another video, like Scorpion and Scream and stuff like that. That's for another video. But anyways, the point I'm trying to make is this This feels right. Now, keep in mind that I use this the red uniform here because this is the more identifiable, identi identifiable version of Spider-Man. If I use the black and gold one, it's going to blend into this tier maker pres presentation mode and it's going to look silly. So I'm not saying the red one is better overall. Uh, it is it is better overall if you want a balanced character for both PvE and PvP. And Beast Mode Gaming made a really good breakdown video of this, why free-to-play players shouldn't buy the black and gold uniform. The black and gold uniform is probably on par or better for PvE than Sharon. And the red uniform is obviously godly for PvP. And it's the best uniform here. Like, he's the best character here on this whole list for PvP. Not a doubt in my mind. So, yeah. You really have your pick you can have your cake and eat it too with Spider-Man. Yeah, whether it's black and gold, red and gold, or both. So, yeah, hit me up. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I'm really excited to hear what the community has to say for this one. Uh, especially when it comes to, you know, White Fox, Kingpin, War Machine, Cap, Hela, Shang-Chi, and then, well, Captain Falcon, and then Spidey. So, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.